Very nice. We can use chill here. Hmm. Alright, I got malice here. Hmm. I'm guessing this is the one that I should do. There was a... Malice lurking behind those eyes. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. I wonder if I missed like too many charms and there's like some more stuff that I like a trap could have seen. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this to all be over. Of course, I'm sure it'll all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for all at the treehouse. Of, of course. Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Alright. So Rolla is missing. Am I going the right way? I'm going the wrong way. Oh my god, this is the guy. <laughs> it's the guy right here. These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. Angry is so more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. And the festival sign waiting to be unveiled. It would be a shame if someone scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Hmm. Ray, it wasn't some innocent mischief after all, was it? Identify yourself, please. Nelly Modwell. I work here. I'm unable to locate you on our staff room. No, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kara said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Oh, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Can't talk to the kid. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo. Say. Rollo, whatever you are, I hope you're okay. I felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered in pulse. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source, he plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's, a place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. This 
Is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A Are you in there? A voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. No. Uh -oh. Chapter 5. Dangers Big and Small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca f A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. What? Stop right there, or well, Trish, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. The Who are you? Your cocked its head inquisitively. Stop now, or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. But what, well, take it easy. Look, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't, Rolo. Oh, God. Rolo's gonna glow up. <laughs> It's all big. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? Uncle? Look, I quit messing around. It's me. If it's really you, so prove it. Blame me chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rollo, only bigger, older, changed. Hell, what happened to you? I was running away around to more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know, they threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can be choosers. Well, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang. I just made me new shoes. My look, why are you so small? to the side and pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? shot up to his face. Holy Toledo. What did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It's kind of tasted like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Well, you smashed open the cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. I saw a bit of a blur. I had you in a cage. Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. You don't need to worry about me. Sure got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched, I know where snatched, snatched people go. I don't know if this is awesome, man. That kind of like took a bunch of like years from your life. You may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger, huh? Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? Yelp! Rollo dove behind Luca. Oh, they come at a bad time. Who the heck are you? Oh, look, she, she dyed her hair. It, this is the timeline where she gets splashed with ooze as well. This is back. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you just hang out here with your large adult friend? No, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. 
How you know this is a recent development? What does that mean? Sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? You see little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. Hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve our security around here. Not now, Rolla. Beg, you said something bizarre happened. Yeah, she but... Shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool. I hope no one notices. No, this is why. <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? Just kind of felt like a change. It's going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nelly and had to go into work. Tonight? I heard Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. The Kerr guy seemed like a grey day creep. Beck. He is. He made his weird cold of personality. We were not going to ruin this job for Nelly. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough for her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains, you'll get used to it. You can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. No one grew up in a town that that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nelly come to see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable at the festival. But not another peep. Sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to ramble by dyeing your hair more? I'll just shave it off for you. Oh god. Think of how rebellious you will look then. You know she's a cat, right? Like it's I don't like I don't know, like where her hair starts and where her fur begins. First of all, second of all. That's like her grey hair, dude. That's like that's some old hair there. I don't know, like might be a problem there as well. Very funny, thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded. No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Nice. Okay, can we get back to the story now? This next part is an important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and I was too angry to sleep. So I tired to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy, what is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately, one moment. Hello sir, it's nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nelly Modwell seems to be in integrated nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. 
Excellent. And we have faith in she is capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good, you know how I feel about the loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she first finished the work, we need to make determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, though. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, you can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to a perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Oh god. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit, no? It's just we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past, I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that, I've, that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Now, as far as we know, carries the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana in the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue work for s of someone she respected. Look, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person Bex? Uh, oh, sorry, I skipped that. I, I was just like uh, automatically clicking buttons. That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nelly's predecessor got him loose ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. It's two days away, won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get her. Clicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. So, the youth elixir is not ready and her mom is making it. I see. Maybe this will help. You have a blueprint? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. She looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have a blueprint. Who really is what this is, right? Started a wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. Oh no. Dog leave. It's officially a heist. Chapter 6. The Heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread, even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Alright, let's get to it, people. Quick recap. Well, you're gonna talk to Roxy. 
Cordially. Without her and Fizz, this whole thing could go bust. Cordial is my middle name. Uh huh. And how do you plan to explain your new. Circumstance. I shall be so happy I'm allowed she won't even notice. And back is sure Ilona I I I won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it. She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff and then Iggy. Nice. How are we gonna persuade them? Think of something. Looked at each other with sleepy confidence and no. Good speed. At least the help of Jeff. Alright. Who's Jeff? Is Jeff the old guy? I think he is the old guy. Where is about anyway? Around these parts? Oh, here's Jeff. Hey Jeff. What can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate bring a harvest. It's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean... I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're gonna break into their headquarters and I thought you might be able to help. Out a long snicker. <laughs> I see I knew your kids were alright. Great, so you'll help. Not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my head and, 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 and abetting you rascals. Into the sullen eyes of his would -be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Boop. Fights. Crooked. Uh. Shit. Yeah, that's all shit. Still ain't open. Ain't that some shit. Okay, let's try that again. Ready to give up. He shouted out again. Fight. I don't know, fighting for one lifetime and more than my share of losing. It's uh, time come to hang up the gloves. Crooked. Yeah, they're all crooks. Like crookages. Stamp one out and then there comes carrying along to take its place. Hide. What do you say? Go ahead and hide then. Oh god. He, oh, he's gonna... You're, you're too much of a pussy to do anything, he's gonna get him. What about your kids do what needs to be done? We're not afraid. Say what you will about old Jeff. They all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. Most that your kids needed. Some sort of disguise. You get just a thing. And while we're at it, the crate should come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I think five bags of sour gum should cover it. Put it on my tab. Then, swing by first thing in the morning. Alright. There he is. Hey, there's look who it is. Okay, are you here to try to tickle us to death again? Or you just hear me out? We're listening. Again, no, we've both been jammed bags of shit to each other. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kinda strange. Strange, you know. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say, we? Oh, break. He likes breaking things. Break our hostility service for now. We do like breaking things. Even if 
truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. Use the cause of distraction so I can sneak into perennial harvest HQ. A wild -eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My my, look at one horn, I'm impressed. And after this all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. He glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. Quick nod, Luca was off. Nice. Do you hear that, Tish? At Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. Uh oh. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. Chapter 7 Into the Hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Just stay calm, Rolo, you can do this. Get your delivery here. A delivery? I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery schedule for this morning. Right. And because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Our harvest waste and such. Of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. A harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. No, didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need, a need to know kind of thing. No, I'll just check. And through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. No, I see. If you could just complete this form. Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late. Well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? I'm... Panicked. Our harvest awaits, sir. That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits. Need to line this candle tish. Yep. Suck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? Distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I got a jump to do. Fumbled around in a frenzy. Hey. I should check on that noise. Oh come on. Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, it's... I remember now, he did, did, did the same kind of thing. Mm, long ago. Our harvest waits. Hey, I figure. When in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pull it off. Nice work, Rolla. Alright, everyone knows what to do. I'm deep engineering is to the north. I'll go back, in case you need some muscle. I'll head east to the Founder's office. You two be safe. I 
that sand. There's not even any cups for the water. The maze. Oh no. This whole place seems to be fake. But of all things, a fake plant. You can do it. Oh, way to nowhere. What's going on here? Has some sort of mind game. Whoops. Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca, what are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I'm certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they were distracted, I ran. Yeah, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. Briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rola and Beck were headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. I'm going to get out of here. We can't leave just yet. They'll catch us again. I gotta do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not, I just need to get into his dad's office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. Office of the Founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran to you or else I might have missed it. <laughs> Truly fortunate. Locked. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock like that. Let's just wait a minute. Are you gonna dig under? Huh? I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. Howdy. Good afternoon. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's a good it's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Ah. Luca switched on his walkie talkie. Rolla, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Your timing was stuck at the lock door marked uh, 24,601. I need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. Am I leaving my friend, Solomon? On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password? Hmm. out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on the black background. <laughs> How did you guess? How did you just guess that? Oh, is this absurd password that all I heard when he was down here before? It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder used such a basic password. Ooh. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. <laughs> your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Bro, well, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open. Look, you never fail to impress. What's that slippery loud even doing down there? 
Yeah, our friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Hey, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked 13A06. Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap, we got a company. Luca must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. Here it is. Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. Oh man, the water cups. Where are we? Well, are you okay? Well, come in. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms. They're trapped. self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Well, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Okay, two rumble rouses are coming with us. Nope. Make a break for it. That little shit just kicked me. I just stand there after them. Okay, I think that worked. Looks good. Fix have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Well, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say, say we're got time. Entering Nell's office now. Mom? Oh, and what did they do to your hair? I thought you'd be happy I finally used the young chemist lab kit. You should have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. I need to get you out of here. V, who is your adult friend? I'm not an adult. Adult? Never heard of growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. That's not possible. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molar, molars, consistent with tempus equipment exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, bang, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. What the hell is going on in this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under beacon pines. It was in a well spring they call the source. They named it Tempus Liquumin. It pulls energy from the surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter relationship to time. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempus Liquumin into the product. It worked wonders drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time. But it led to complications. The power harvest. Renew harvest came into the clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempus Liquumin is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. You can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempus Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. She didn't, right? You know how much I love a good puzzle? I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? 
They contain obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed the mint, and now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. And those clothes were all hand-me-downs anyway. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I considered that possibility. I sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, well, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kura had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. I just, like now, wait a while. I finally solved the chemical equation allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kern picked it up just before he came. All the more reason we gotta have they lit. Look what we got, Dr. Modwell. Hanging your way now. More just that, be careful. Alright, everything's on track. And what's your plan for escape? We'll go with everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Malice 80 proof whiskey. Hard drink for a hard man. Now even his alcohol is arrogant. Should just smother you right now. What's that? I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're not bothered at all. Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security systems, time card logs, payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? He's getting more and more pissed off. He's gonna snap. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps is not so careless as you suspected. Perhaps. It looks like the founder was helping Kara plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be upset with the party? Only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. He must have been here recently. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You need to worry about me. But I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of here, this I promise. Lock it, lock it, lock it. I'm locked. That was close. We left Nelly's office, it was swarming with clipboards. I barely got away. Did they follow you? Rollo. Of course, that doesn't blame around. It is possible someone ordered a pizza. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me, I'm officially retiring from my heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience, we just have a few quick questions. So let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Everyone else had all up. Whoops. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no. Hush now, child, the adults are speaking. Dr. Modwell, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child. The powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest, valentine fertilizer. All connected by single thread. Yours truly. That's... Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of Epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Ah, yes, now you get it. 
Tempus Liquid menu discovered how to reverse the process. Very good, Dr. Modwell, very good. That the discovery was an intentional. And the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr and the Vile, please. May I present to you the eighth wonder of the finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Huh? Well, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in hand. Actually we do. We just did a whole evil will and monologue thing about it. Toss the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Seize him. Luca, over here. Oh, another inch and I'll smash it. Tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. If you're lucky, nothing happens, then what? I capture you and grant you much less leniency. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. Uncertainty washed over back. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. They both know there is only one way in the sense. Nelly shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nelly sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. You can just... Trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. Apprehension. Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mm, I thought she would be like psych at the very end. Now this makes me think that she like put something in it. Mr. K, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first you have a speech to make. Throw it out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all this thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand how is this all because of me. Said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great, but the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. But the universe has a funny way of correcting the course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. Resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. After the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three keep post outside the door. Well, crap. Can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now was the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do, you always have a plan, Rollo. You just need some time. The light's over. We lost. Nelly was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca, give me a minute to calm my mind. Hey, I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just, we were so close. I got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like a less of an issue for him now. 
Look at this, something I should know. He... After Mr. K locked me in the office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means to escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at Peril Harvest had grown short, so he left behind a letter with hope that it would be found by his successor. It was confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents. Luca, I think they were meant for you. But what did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with the stolen key card. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amount of a temple's liquid. Did she 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 survived? Dr. Pesco decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts secret. Over time your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. I realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. And I believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. I was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she is alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hall. Chapter 8 Come up in Ears still ringing No oh, hell yeah she Picked herself up off the ground Through the dust and smoke She looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli Helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal To acquire those explosives How many nights had she spent Visualizing how she'd use them To make things right And now Her one shot at destroying the source That damned hole that swallowed So much of her life Was gone traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Oh, nice. Grail, what are you doing here? Look, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolla. Hey, Miss Look, Gran. It's awful nice of you, but I'm fine. And then what did they... Yeah, there's no time to explain, we'll have to go now. Come on everyone, we've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. A glass vial from his pocket. I'm gonna stop him. Smooth motion, he downed its contents. Oh no. Smile grew across Solomon's lips. Beck makes something in, didn't she? No, well I guess that's it, we lost. I wouldn't be so sure about that. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have twigged his wonder potion with a little... Malice change junk. Hmm. Kinda wanna try malice and junk, but I think we should go change. For like the real ending or whatever. No, whatever, let's just try them all. Malice, the whiskey from his office. The empty had an unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grogius could use a little hair of the dog. You can call me Sharper Valentine. And face 
began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's just dead. He just explodes into... Confetti. Pretty sure, like, they're just kind of censoring it and he, like, literally, like, imagine him just exploding into gore and guts. And that's what I call 80 proof whiskey. Damn, dude. <laughs> Gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. That's the good ending, right? The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, oh, he was God. fully aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. Sheesh, that's... Was unexpected. Uh, that's grim. My man just died and everyone's laughing. An absurd ending for my taste, but... Who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Alright, I guess that wasn't the true ending. Let's see, do we have anything? We don't, right? Yeah, we, we've done everything. At least everything that I found so far. Let's try junk, I guess. I, his wonder potion with a little junk. I mean, honestly, I don't really know which one is the right, but I think change is the right one but can wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigar ash how did ashes get into the wild it was pretty easy to mess with the wild when it was behind my back that's sneaky it's a bad habit anyways i always said bad habits are like 50 yard field goals huh hard to kick you can all call me Shopper Valentine. And face began to contort and expand. What happened? Oh god. <laughs> My man he got that oh, snap out of existence. Well that's one way to kick a bad habit. Okay. into the air the crowd began to disperse still numb from what they had just observed sharper valentine was gone for good his end would be a new beginning for beacon pines a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future the all right i'd be lying if i said that wasn't a bit gratifying if that feels to you like a good note to end on i won't stand in your way Then I guess they want us to change. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? You're a lucky penny. Yeah, I plopped it in a while when no one was looking. What's that going to do? No idea, that's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. Began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. No, oh, no. He turned further into a baby. Our guy is a baby. Maybe he's still sharper, right? But he was no longer matters. Oh God. This is an innocent child. When? <laughs> How is it an innocent child? Doesn't he remember? Or does he not remember? He's literally just forgotten forever. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Paris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we... What do we Valentines always do? What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father, young sharper. 
That would be a great help, thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. What about the source? What is it? What What is it? I still don't get it. What, what is it about? It's aliens? Is it aliens? <laughs> Okay. Didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, right. the farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. All right. Merle, well, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be there in a minute. All right, let's go. Over time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. Alright, hey, mom. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm ready to go now. Go on without me, I'll meet you there. Get a bunch of jam to finish sharing. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. Alright. We've done it. Let's go say hi to dad, even though it's not the real dad. Hmm, guess we can't. I hear you and Roy have a big plans for the little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we were to the max capacity one roll one looker rule. So we decided to expand. At least we got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop going? It's been great. Hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture upstate. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. He don't just mean grow, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his ex excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, cause he'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too dang proud to tell you. I know. What's up, Augustus? How's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Alona and Nelly for letting me help. This wasn't built to be a mare. Too much bureaucracy. Guess I finished cleaning up the sidewalk. What's next? Also, can anyone explain to me what the fuck are the clipboards? They're just some sort of like clones, just Agent Smith, like, what, like drone, like what? Anyone with the knack for art can help paint these new offices. You can count on us. It looks like you really found your calling. 
I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this right here... Is something I can be proud of. So you decided on a name. And we had to clear out all the old stuff from putting on the final touch. Slow and dirty harvest is now official. I like it. It was actually Nelly's idea. Still a lot of work to do, and, and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. Interesting. In fact, I learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Oh. Oh, that's that's a nice uh, sentiment. The more it is, go slow and fix things. I'm into that. True, 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 true. Better not do a dally, I gotta go get her treehouse, okay. But I'm gonna have to say goodbye to everyone, or whatever. What's up, Fisherman Jones? I used to reel an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah, I know it's the goodness. Flip flop and swim, swim and fish. I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. Well, it's seven years since we caught one. I'd say it's a good omen. What do, what, what do you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. I'm going to catch it again tomorrow. A little higher. No, oh, nice. This is so heartwarming, isn't it? No, oh, I love Iggy. Iggy is great. A little lover. Yep. A little higher. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Oh, look, there you are. Did you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of an antenna redesign. Fine, fine, he could just don't do anything drastic until we get back. To me? Dude, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. It'll be fine, right? It'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> we really want Mr. Control to turn into something bigger and better. I have no to loosen our grip a bit. You're right. Lead the way. I guess uh, you guys are alright. Throwing a horn. Those little Solomon are sharper doing. Being sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. I see, uh, you know. Attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination. Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Mo Dr. Modwell and she feels that sharper infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Mm, I don't know about that. Must be still deep, deep down there somewhere, ain't it? The sub's a little nicer the second time around. That's the objective, yes. But really all I can do is try and hope. To activity is someone endeavoring to find less to strike the strength well, I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town is ready to help out whenever we can. I can't wait to teach him to throw the baseball. Did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. He looked at his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it the end. Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Oh, how nice. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? I think you're pretty much up to speed. <laughs> what is up? 
Do you want a biscuit? On the house? I don't really have time. Zario, you gotta keep, come on and see this. Finally did it. I pulled the perfect espresso. Now let me. I didn't know better. I think you're proud of something. As if... It's too late. You're now officially a person that cares. That's so sweet. Yon. Glad you swung by. We'll follow up questions for your story. No one got everything I need. Thanks again for that. So I drafted the story to the reporter in Capital City. They offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of people and moved it them to cover up a massive illegal mine shaft full of incredibly hazardous chemicals sort of rise itself if you think about it. Just don't forget us when you become fancy big city reporter. Capital City is not far away. I'm gonna have to come back from time to time to check in and see what sort of new trouble you got yourself into. So I do disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. Yeah, we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call the reporter's intuition. Oh, nice. Hey, clipboard. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? It's two weeks of an uncarbored tranquility. Excuse me, would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, and forgotten obligations. Excuse me, I'd like to place an order. As soon as the lunch rush ends, I'll be feathered on the wind. I'm going on vacation for the first time in years. I've got you and your mom to think. Why is that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are gonna fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. It's like old times. Final wait. Alright. Back for seconds. There's not much to trouble for the longest time. I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose other than to be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. It was pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. Hey, look, can you really tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. But that's making me stock the shelves for the summer. Say that Bill's character. I think you meant to say it builds Colossus. Bill's character. I built something, alright? Look, okay, can I interest you in a delicious apple? Don't you have candy? No thanks, just saying hello. Well, hello then. Mind telling me your mom we need a new crate of jam? Already, it's funny, I used to hide this stuff in the back. Terrified that someone would find a doubt about our secret messages. Everyone wants to get their hands on Eleanor Van Horn's famous spy jam. Oh, look at the bunnies, so adorable. Hey, Mr. Nancreed, I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Do you want to come with? Even after everything I did, it's still... You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always my dad. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Come on, come on, no one is too big, no one is too small. But Jeff's wild ride. Maybe not completely amused. This one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? Me, 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 me. Where am I going? Check my back, right. I didn't check with the bugman or whatever. I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. 
It's just a box. Let's not blow things out of proportion. Sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're gonna be stuck with me for a f foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years there aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. I'm ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. I didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them, just about the whole town pitched in. We all you all owe you one. Should do okay in a cold or all beacon pines. And thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. Hmm. I don't think there's anything out there, but whatever. Guess we can check it anyway. No oh, wait, it's still. I need to take the, the ride over there. But I'm a bit tired by this point. Sorry about that. Kinda of recorded in like two days this whole game. That's a good looking tree, being a special occasion and whatnot. This ride is on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. Happy on me and narrator now. I don't really get uh I'm kinda getting uncomfortable here. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny now that our time together is finally ending. I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Sounds good to me. Then a good little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. I should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild ride. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. I always says the only thing better than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. But if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. I, uh, thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh god. I won't be long. We're waiting for you back at the phone booth. We found the perfect way to start our summer. We got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud of you. I know. I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you ever dream about that? That night goes by that I don't. Are you afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he look like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modwell says that over the next few years this place should warm up. So it won't have to be so cold for much longer. 
think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in, big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you you. If you wouldn't have stood up the sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. No. Is that it? We're done. Is that the end? No. It's kind of a shame. Nice. That was a pretty cool game. I really loved it. It's uh... Pull on some heartstrings. Some familiar themes that the characters go through in a story. Sort of some of the same things I myself kinda went through. And still going through, I guess. You know, it is. I guess it's meant to be that kind of story is really, you know, um, relatable to people. It was really cool. I enjoyed it through it through, even though maybe I kind of felt, uh, like when I was reading, maybe I felt like I was a bit rushing. I'm still glad I finished it, and uh... Yeah, I don't know. It was a nice and uh, sweet story. I love the characters. I still wish it was about... Uh... Goes to like if there's only thing is it only one thing that I would you know wish uh, there was uh, more of uh, I I would prefer that it would have been more spooky you know maybe some scary more like I don't know more like dark themes oh, I don't know maybe some ghosts maybe some murder you know. Even though there was, you know. I, I don't know. Just an evil corporation. The evil bad CEO. Not really my favorite kind of villain, you know. But yeah, this was really cool. I really liked Iggy. I think Iggy was my favorite character. He's kind of... Like his story beats is this character. Sounds familiar. Alright, I guess we're done here.